Hello, my name is Jim Brassad, and I'm here to make a tribute to a fallen pioneer in the martial arts. If you're in the Shaolin Temple Arts at all, you've heard Great Grandmaster Federalori has passed on in July of 2022. Now, I know a lot of you out there can say many things about him, but some things that can't be denied. He was a pioneer in the martial arts. At one time, he had 400 schools in the 80s. I know that. I was part of the organization. It takes a great man to achieve that. Now, a lot of people have this to say and that to say about him. But like great Grandmaster Ed Parker said, if they're talking about you, whether good or bad, you must be very important. Now, I want to share a little story. And I got a lot of them, and I'd like, I'm going to share some more in the future, but this one pertains to the video clip I'm going, about to show you. It was in the mid-70s, I started at the Valari organization. It was United Studios of Self-Defense back then. And one of the highlights of the tournament that I would go to and compete would be the Grandmaster getting in the middle and doing what's called the Ballad of Death, or the Dance of Death, where you would take on ten black belts. And it was so motivating to watch that. I couldn't stop working out for months after that. Then we fast forward some decade, or so, about 10 years later, and I'm a young man. I'm at a black belt workout in 1988 in Massachusetts, and he, the Grandmaster calls me out to punch for him while he demonstrates the art and teaches. I remember my mother watching this clip you're about to see saying, look at that, Jim. Ten years ago, he was your superhero. Now look, you're in the ring with him, punching in from him, and he's teaching. What a wonderful memory that was. When it was over, I was a little rattled, and Grandmaster John Fritz came up to me, put his hand out, shook my hand, and said, Welcome to the club. And that's another wonderful memory I have of the time. <clears throat> and also afterwards, it seemed I had instant celebrity status when it was over, because everybody was coming up to me, talking to me, what it was like. I will say this, I felt things happening and him doing things, and I know nobody else saw. So I did learn a lot more than what people saw. With that being said, I'd like to show you a small part of that clip of that day. And I'd like to say farewell, Grandmaster Valari. Thank you so much for the lessons. They have grown and are still growing in me and have grown in my students. Rest in peace. Once again, all right? <laughs> Once again, here. I hold him here, right? Hit him here, he's weaker. If they hit him here, not only has he got to give, right? These are the same lifelines, okay, that are covered by here. And these are supplying energy to that. Here, this side is energy to this side. So I've cut off his energy supply. Cut off his energy supply, he becomes vulnerable, especially for dotting. Okay? You see how I just touched him light and I hit him? Because I shut off his energy. Once again, I'm jumping around a lot of things. So let's not jump around too much. Okay. Once again, let's get the lock and the pin. We haven't gone over the pins. Okay, pull another way. Okay. Let's get a guy down. Okay, he fell on me. Okay. Like that, right? Okay, pin. Look. I use my knees, my legs, the pin. And as you fall, you suddenly go with the flow, right? Fall into me, turn down. Okay, same thing we did standing up, remember? Peace blowing this way, let's let him go with it. Look, look. Hey? Look. Oh, easy, 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 okay? Yep. Okay, sorry, right? Now, see, here's a perfect example. Okay? As he flows, right here, I break his neck and his arm and shoulder. One, one falls through. <laughs> okay, but what did I do? I let him flow, didn't I? <coughs> The hardest thing you're going to learn <coughs> is the grappling uh, chin not moves a white tiger without strength. Because it's like, you know, how does it really work? I don't believe it. It's easy to say, I can hit him here. I can kick him and get a lot of power. It's hard to learn strike, fall off, and not get hit. The whole object of hitting with your hands and feet is try not to get hit. The whole object of using the body in grappling is not to use any strength. But you're going to have a lot of strength. There's always a moment they can use strength. If you get in trouble, you can use strength for a second. Uh, it's good to have the strength, okay? But with that again, what do we just do? We just want to look. Okay. 
What did you do? How did I do it? Let's see. Okay, okay, I'll be good. Okay, okay, he comes in. Okay, we come back. Okay, here. Yeah. That's that pen. All right? You see how I, 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 I do not fight him. There's another lock. There's a finger, wrist lock, neck lock. Okay? That's a mongo lock. That takes strength. You can tell everything into wrinkles. Because, you know what? Nobody knows how the fight's going to end up. You can never say, look, we're just going to use our hands. <laughs> Didn't we just cover a hard guy to fight and a guy that's a terrible fighter? No. We're going to use the with everybody in the dojo. And the first guy's first day, he's following me, and I go, Jesus Christ, I say, he looks terrible. He looks so terrible, you don't know where you're going to hit him. <laughs> you don't know if you can hit him. Because when you go there, he's not there, you might fall on the ground, right? <laughs> so you say, I'm not sure I can hit him. <laughs> so there's, there's something of value in that. You understand? Okay.